Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our playoff special uh, here on the Greenbrier Valley Channel. We are here tonight to honor and kick off the playoff season with the Greenbrier East Spartans. Uh, this was a journey that began back in August. First leg of the journey is complete. The regular season's done. Second leg of the journey begins tomorrow night as the Greenbrier East Spartans will be taking on the George Washington Patriots. And then the final leg of that journey will be the trip back down from Wheeling Island with that big trophy in your hands. So let's get it kicked off tonight. <laughs> My name is Greg Christ. I work for the Greenbrier Valley Channel and the New River Network. Of course, this is Mr. Cam Huffman here. Most of you all know him, I'm sure. And uh, we're going to be hosting and emceeing tonight. Uh, I know you don't want to hear me talk, so I'm going to turn it over to him here in just a minute uh, so we can get started. Uh, while I am reading our, our uh, sponsors for tonight, we want to thank them for making all this possible. Uh, we're going to ask Coach Ray Lee if he'll come up. Uh, Mr. Hubman's going to speak with him here to get this thing kicked off. Uh, after we get uh, Coach Lee up, if the players, if you guys don't mind kind of forming a line over here to the side, uh, we're going to have you guys come up, introduce yourself to the camera, so all these millions of viewers can watch you guys out here. So uh, we'll have you to do that when we get Coach Lee up here to start with. Uh, we appreciate all of you coming out tonight for this celebration. Uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night as we knock off the Patriots. So thanks to our sponsors, Beckley Auto Mall, Willie Lilly, Paco Mandeville, Tattered and Worn, Mountain Made, and I think this is Lazon Painting, the Bank of Monroe, State Farm Insurance, uh, Rasmund Walker, or Walken, I believe that is, Gary Aid, Food and Friends, The Market, uh, Hanshaw Insurance, Brown Construction, and our mayor, Beverly White. We appreciate all those sponsors. If you don't mind, let's give the sponsors a hand, too, for making this possible. All right. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Cam Huffman, and he's going to be talking to the head man of this show, Coach Ray Lee. Take it away, Cam. All right, Coach Lee, uh, obviously, this has got to be an exciting moment. You hear the, hear the buzz behind it. Your, your kids are fired up, and uh, it's been an incredible season, but still work left to do, right? Oh, you know, it's never over until it's over. We still got one game left, and what we've been talking with our players about all week uh, mm -hmm. since all of this started, it's a one-game championship. So this is our championship game for us this week. And come 10 o'clock tomorrow night, 10.30, we want to win that championship and be 1-0. Coach mentioned when, when he introduced you that this process sort of started in August, but really this, this process started years ago when you took over the program and you've kind of continued to build to this point. And along the way, there's been, been marks where you made the playoffs for the first time and now you've won eight games for the first time and it, all along the way. But how is that process going overall? And it, did it go kind of the timeline you expected it to or how, how did that work out? Whenever you start, you know, a program, um, and, I, and I'll say it, no matter what you're involved in, you want to set yourself some goals, have a vision, and then have a mission, and then basically just try to set every day, get up and work towards that mission that you basically put out there and that vision that you have. So when you say it started 10 years ago when I first started, it was basically just to come in and just set some, some basic goals from the start and have a vision of what you're looking at right now. That was the ultimate goal was to what we're doing right now. Obviously, along the way, you, you, as I said a minute ago, you, you made the f playoffs for the first time since 1998. Then you hosted a playoff game for the first time. But the, the, the next step, I guess, the thing you haven't done yet is win one of those postseason games. And I know your, your players have to be pretty fired up to, to try to do that for the first time since 1996. You know, and again, we talk to our players about things like that. I always want to be a first, have a first in mind no matter what it is. And uh, just like you're saying right there, 
to be able to come and make the playoffs for the first time in almost two decades, you know, that 2015 year. When that freshman group came in that year, that was pretty much our goal at that time. By the time you become seniors, we should be looking at the program that we want to have, you know, for the future of, of Greenbrier East High School. So they were setting the tone at that moment as to what we're wanting to do right now and what you're looking at right now, rather, and, and basically put all of those standards in place and all those expectations, and you just keep working towards those every year, and every year you want to try and improve on those same expectations. We talked after the win last Friday night about getting the eight-win season for the first time in 23 years, and I asked you if the players really understood what that meant. And now that it's been almost a week since then, you've had a chance to reflect. Do you, you think your players get it, that uh, – how long it's been and, and what they've accomplished this season? Yeah, I think it's starting to sink in with them, you know, especially with events like this right here that we're doing, um, you know, the coaches. I, and I'll just say the coaches, you know, stress a lot of that to them also. Um, seeing the excitement that's being built around all of what we're doing right now as opposed to just going to practice and it's another game, uh, being able to do things like this. we got a great parent group that has made sure that they were recognized and getting things um, you know, to them and letting them know how much they appreciate them and not just the parents alone, but the community itself. So I think it's starting to sink in with them. And I tell them, you know, when you're playing like a champion, you get treated like a champion. And if you want to be treated like a champion, you have to act like a champion, both on and off the field. So a lot of that is starting to develop also. And speaking of that, that treated like a champion, I, I know you've mentioned a couple times how much the community really gets behind this team. And you see an event like tonight, you see uh, extra wings being passed out to all your players and all those sort of things. It, it, the community really has rallied around this team, and, and I know that's important to you and, and all your players. Yeah, and, and I think that's a, when I say that's a great moment for our guys to see that uh, when you're doing things the right way, um, both on and off the field, people take notice. And, they, and I always tell them, people don't mind doing when you're doing the right things. So we continue to preach that to our young men and want them to be young men. Just And then when I say you be young men, both on and off the field, and more, more, more importantly, uh, having them be gentlemen off the field is what's important to us also. Just a minute ago, you mentioned your coaching staff, and I know you always bring them up and say it's, it's not about you, it's about everybody. Can you just quickly take us through that coaching staff and tell us uh, who all makes it up and, and how they help this engine run? When, <laughs> when you say help make this engine run, and, they're, they're, and I tease them all the time that I'm going to end up being like John Kelly. I had a long talk with him up at the uh, playoff meeting where he just shows up and let them do all the work. And that's where, and I'll tell you, we're getting to that point now. I have total confidence in these guys. Um, great, great football minds all the way around. Know how to treat the players, know how to talk to them. And they know what, what my expectations are, so they pass that on to them, and then they add their flavor to it, which makes, which really helps. We have different personalities throughout our entire coaching staff. And when I say I love every one of them, love every last one of them that we have there. And just to show you how the culture is being built, um, we've actually coached some of our players. And when I say we, my, my, my top assistant, defensive coordinator, assistant head coach, whatever title he wants and whatever he, we give him is uh, Aaron Baker. Um, he has coached um, two of our assistant players. Where is uh, Coach Baker? So, uh, and, and having him on having him on staff is is pretty much just having like a second head coach there. Um, so Coach Baker has coached three of our young men that that's on staff. I've coached two of them. He had them pretty much up until his last year, and then my very first year I had two of them. So it's Coach Aaron Baker. We have uh, Coach Mike Anderson, which is, you know has some experience up at um, Mount View come in with some knowledge also. We got um, Coach Harper that coaches our special teams, pretty much does a great job with our special teams. Then we have Davis Solak. He's new to our staff this year. Um, he's one that I coached his senior year. Coach Baker had him also as a player. Got Eric Canterbury, which is another one of our assistants that I coached his senior year. Coach Baker also had him 
Uh, we got Coach Erskine, you know, that's on staff with us also. Coached at the middle school, Coach Erskine coached with me one time before and then left and went to the middle school and he came back. And then we have, um, who am I missing? I think I got them all. Coach Harper, all of them. Um, and I'm telling you, when it gets to this point, if I forget somebody, man, I feel awful. So if it comes back up and I did miss somebody, I'll let you know. But I think I got them all. Um, so that's, that, that's the makeup of our staff. And, I, and like I said, I think we have a great staff to work with. Oh, I'm sorry. We have Sergeant Smith, which is one of our coaches also. And, and um, he's kind of like the guy that lays everything out for us. Knows football, but he works behind the scene on everything that you see us doing and that we get to do when we travel. And then we have Major Pick and Paul as one of our um, volunteer assistants. I can't leave out my clock operator. You know, we got Brian Baker and, uh, and uh, Mr. Boone, Steve Boone. They take care of our clock. So we have all of those guys as part of our staff. I can't do this by myself, and you've heard me say that many a times. It's just like having a, a great marriage behind a great husband as a great wife. So these guys are, are great assistants to me. Well, thank you, and I know that they have made a huge difference. And even even once this year, Coach Baker had to step in and, and take over. So, uh, but I, but I know you you it had to make it easier to do that, knowing that you had somebody of that caliber to, to step in and, and take control. It, it, you know, and when you say it was easier, it was. It, it, you know, you it's, you still have that same stress as a coach. You want to be there, see the game. Even if I was coaching on the same on the sideline, I still had the same butterflies not being there because you want your team to be successful. But when you have those expectations and standards in place and you built that culture, it's, it's hard to deviate away from what's already in place. And those guys just stepped right in, didn't miss a beat, ran everything just like it was supposed to be run. And when you've been together for that kind of period of time, you pretty much know what the culture is, you know what, what's expected, you know what to do next. You mentioned the success that your team had this year. Let's talk about some of that success. And it started off with a road trip to Point Pleasant, long trip to face a very good team. That kind of set the tone for the season, going up there and getting a win. The only loss that they ended up taking all season long. <laughs> you know, and that, you know, I stress that to our players. When, when we walked away from there that week, um, you know, I actually told them, I said, guys, you played a real good football team. You know, you're talking about a good football team that has history in winning. They were, they were a dominant team in AAA football before they went down to AA football. When they went down to AA football, they were still doing the same thing. They're just a AAA team in a 2A class. And, and you look at how they play, the size they are, you know, how disciplined they are. And, and for us to go on a trip like that and win a football game, that said a lot about the character of our football team and, and, and the caliber football team that we had at that moment. And, I, you know, and I came back and I talked to the coaches and I told them, I said, guys, we got a good football team. You know, the way they played up there, the adversity that they faced, you know, bounced back from some penalties and just kept plugging along. And, then, and I'll tell you, it was a hot football game also. Didn't see any quit in them whatsoever. So that showed a lot about their character. And that was a real confidence booster for me as a football coach. Maybe the most difficult thing to do in a game like that is to follow it up. But you came back the next week on the road against your rival and Woodrow Wilson and, and got another win and kind of snowballed from there. Yep, and you know, and that's always a big game there. And and, and I think the big thing that we did um, all week long was emphasizing to our players: don't make it about Woodrow, make it about you. You know, this game is all about you and what you're supposed to do and taking care of your business. And I think a lot of times they get so jacked up, you know, because it's Woodrow, and then they lose focus on what the, what's at hand. And it's the game at hand that we want to win and not trying to beat them per se. We won't go through every game, but but from there it started to snowball a little bit and you just started to roll. And really when you look at that 8-2 record, you're only a few plays away from being undefeated. I mean, it was, it was that kind of season for you. When you say that a few plays away, I think um, Coach Baker and I was having this conversation um, early this week. And if you take five plays, it, I, and I think that's what we sat down and talked about, it was five plays that kept us from being undefeated this year. 
And, you know, and again, it's what we talk to our players about. When you go out to play, you've got to play a perfect football game. You can't make mistakes. You've got to eliminate the penalties and, and pretty much don't turn the ball over. And if you look at those five plays, that's pretty much what the, those were. I guess the most important thing, though, they always talk about peaking at the right time and playing your best football as you head into postseason. When you look at what you did in the overtime win against Princeton and then the next week against Lincoln County, you have to feel like you are playing your, your best football at the right time, don't you? And then after that Princeton game, that was one thing that we stressed um, all week in practice. It, pretty much talking about peaking at the right time. To play a football game like they did, you know, to hear it, wasn't there to see it, but to win it in overtime, and you're playing against a good football team like Princeton, and then you're able to battle in a game like that, face some adversity, and then win it, and win it in the fashion that we did. Then you come back the next week, and you have a little bit of adversity from the start in the Lincoln County game against another good football team. And, you know, they weren't a slouch football team. And then you end up scoring the points that we scored, shutting down them on offense, you know, when we needed to. Then that shows that's momentum going into this playoff game that we're getting ready to play tomorrow night. Well, let's talk about that playoff game. George Washington, what have you seen from them on tape? What, what do you think is going to be some of the keys to the game and, and coming away with a win? I'll say this. They're just big. <laughs> and when I say they're, they're a big football team, they execute well. You know, they got a football coach that's been there for a while. Uh, coach Edwards, I think he's like the second or third longest tenured coach in the state in one place. So that says a lot right there with the continuity that has been built in their football program. And when they're ready to execute, they can execute when they have to. And it's just a matter of us being disciplined, playing disciplined football, and, and eliminating those mistakes against a team like this. We can't, we can't go out and, and make mistakes against them, especially with the size factor, their skill level, and, and again, the continuity that they have in their football program. I think about it this way, though, Coach. You're sitting here thinking about what they, the challenges that they present to you. Put yourself in their shoes a little bit and, and trying to figure out how to stop these guys you have on your side. I mean, when you, when you look at your guys offensively, so many weapons and so many different ways you can move the football, put it in the end zone, whether you're, you're pounding it forward, he inclined, whether your quarterback, Monquel Davis, is, is tucking it and running himself or, or throwing down the field to some a great group of receivers. This offense has all the weapons and can, can really move the ball in a lot of different ways. When you, when you say put myself in their shoes, I, I would be a little bit in, in, on the intimidated side, knowing that I have, if I end up keying on this guy, then there's another person I got to look out for. And that's that, and I'll say it, the beauty of what we have right now as, as an offensive uh, unit is we have that many weapons that we can go to. At any given moment, we can put the ball in somebody's hand and, and they can make a play. You know, you got Lucas McAllister, you got Ian Klein, you got Bryson Orangeby, you got Jake Pate. Yeah, Monquel. You know, we can go down the list right there. You know, you got Jared McHale. Then we take one of those guys out. And then you got someone else that can come in and fill for him. And that's not, you know, bragging, but I think that's that goes back to us getting the guys out there and really just coaching them up and coaching them up to a point where they have that kind of confidence that they can play. And those are the guys that you you hear their names mentioned on our broadcast or you see their names in the paper. But those guys up front do a lot of work for you, too, and, and, and that makes all the difference on that offense. I, I tell them all the time that, that, that they're, the, they're the engine that, that, makes, the, that makes the whole car run. Um, all of that looks good on the outside, but if they, we didn't have those five guys up front, um, we couldn't go anywhere. You know, we got Aiden Cole, that's a sophomore at center, has worked his tail off in the offseason came in as a sophomore and earned himself a starting position. So we know we're solid right there. Then you got your guard positions with Landon Hayes, um, Luke Fogus, Seth Fogus, JT Spencer, Jacob Wickline, you know, right on down the line. And, uh, and you know, and we got backups that are young. We got Garen Wiseman as a sophomore coming in, uh, making some plays also. We got uh, Seth Bogus, that's a starter. Luke Bogus is one of the guys that come in as a backup. So we have we have quite a few young people also that's going to fill in those spots after the uh, next start next year. And then I guess if you're putting yourself in the shoes of the opposing coach, the other problem there in trying to stop this offense, as you know, 
that you're not going to get many points yourself when it comes to the, that defense you guys put out there. They've been pretty stingy this year. They, they have, and, and, and again, uh, giving Coach Baker, you know, credit there running the defense. Um, you know, we've got a solid unit over there, and those guys get after it. And I tell them all the time, that will take up as much practice time as you want because if they don't score, we don't lose. So we want them to make sure they're in the right place at all times. You know, you got, you know, the two seniors there inside, Cayman Anderson, Garrett Bennett. Then you got Jared McHale that's playing both sides of the ball. And, and when I say go down the list, we can go down the list with all of those guys. You got Bryson Orangeby at a cornerback. You got Levi Wagner. And I think a lot of people don't realize this, but Levi Wagner, from what I understand, is leading the state in the interceptions with six of them. So here, here again, you got young men that are making plays. You know, had a great pick six last week against Lincoln County. And then you got uh, other young guys back there playing also. You got Holiday coming off the bench. Now he's starting. You got Jake Pate playing at free safety. So we have a real good defensive unit out there that get after people. Well, we might as well talk about the third phase as well. I know we talked early in the season about how some high school teams in the state of West Virginia may not pay that much attention to special teams, but you guys do, and you have some weapons out there with, with Noah Dotson and his big leg, and it, it's really made a difference for you all season long. He, you know, Noah basically was doing two sports, and then he decided that he just wanted to focus on kicking, you know, us with us, you know, playing football. Uh, has gone to several camps, has improved his kicking skills, you know, tremendously. And when I say kick, he was at one point, had like 28 or 29 consecutive extra points. Uh, I can't call him right off the top, but I think he's basically up in the upper 80% range on his field goals. And, you know, and he got pretty good distance on his leg, with his leg. You know, we, we feel confident in him lining up at 36, 37 yards going for a field goal. So he's, he's done a real good job for us in that aspect. All right, Coach, I think we've, we've pretty much covered it all, but I appreciate your time, and I know I speak for everybody in here when I say uh, go get a win on Friday night. <laughs> I say the same thing. Go Spartans. Yeah! All right, thanks to Coach Lee. But as, uh, as Coach Lee mentioned, it takes an entire team to make this happen. So we're going to have you guys come forward one at a time and just uh, look into the camera, say your name, say your position, say your grade, and, uh, and just hand it off to the next guy so that we can uh, give credit where credit's due to the entire team. Right here, y'all stand up. Duck out ahead. I'm good. Um, my name is Marco Davis. Um, I play quarterback, uh, class of 2023. All right, thank you very much, Marco. Next up. <laughs> Who's up, guys? Don't be shy. Uh, my name is Donovan Penn. I'm a freshman, and I'm QB2. My name is Logan Hayes. I'm a long snapper and I'm class of 2024. Yeah! I'm Landon Hayes. Um, I'm a senior and I play left guard. Yeah! Uh, my name is Ian Klein. I'm a sophomore and I'm running back free safety. Uh, Cayman Anderson, a uh, middle linebacker, and I'm a senior. <laughs> Noah Dotson, class of 2023, and I'm a kicker. <laughs> Jared McHale, Frankfurt Elementary School. Class of 2022, linebacker. Yeah! All right, who's next? Bryson Ormsby, class of 2022, wide receiver and cornerback. Yeah! 
Lucas McAllister, class of 2023, and wide receiver. My name's Jake Pate, uh, class of 2024, receiver, and rover. My name is Luke Rolla, and I'm a junior, and I'm a D-tackle. Braden Bragg, class of 2022. I'm a linebacker and a tight end. My name is Ethan Hersman. I'm a senior and I play defensive tackle. My name is Craig Barnhouse. I'm a junior and I'm an outside linebacker. My name is Seth Fogus. I'm a senior and I play uh, offensive tackle. My name is Garen Wiseman. I'm a sophomore and I play offensive tackle and offensive guard. I'm Luke Fogus. I'm a junior and I play right great guard. My name is Aiden Cole, uh, class of 2024. I play center. My name's Kane Taylor. I'm a junior and I play outside linebacker. My name is C.W. Sturgill. I play running back and linebacker, and I'm class of 2025. My name's Ryan White. I'm a junior, and I play left tackle. Uh, Joe Baker, class of 2025, outside linebacker and running back. My name is Blake Green. I'm a junior and nose guard. My name is Sam Wright. Uh, I'm a sophomore and I'm a defense tackle. My name is James McCraw, and I'm a nose guard. Yeah. Austin Roberts, sophomore, right tackle. Who's up next, guys? Uh, where's the camera? Uh, my name is Ashton Mintz. Right tackle, and I'm the class of 2025. My name is Carter Hamilton. I am middle linebacker, and I am a sophomore. Uh, my name is Weston Pence. I'm a sophomore and a middle linebacker. My name's Owen Wolford. I'm a freshman and I'm a free safety. Sorry about that. Uh, my name's Rhett Baker. I'm left guard and class 2025. Uh, my name is Chris Jacobs. Uh, I'm a junior and I'm a wide receiver. Yeah. 
My name is Charlie Willander. I'm a freshman. I play right guard and long snapper. Hi, my name is Parker Hale, and I'm a freshman, and I play safety. My name is Ray McCraw. I'm a freshman, and I'm a quarterback. My name is Bo Bayer, and I play center. My name is James Fowler. I am a linebacker and punter in class of 2023. My name's Cole Rennick. I play outside linebacker, bench, class of 2025. I'm Cody Jenkins. I play outside linebacker, class of 2023. My name's Ashton Hill. I'm a freshman and I play outside linebacker. My name's Caleb Tolley. I'm a freshman and I play wide receiver and corner. My name is Nixon Brown. I'm a freshman and I'm a kicker. My name's Elias White. I'm a sophomore and play corner. I'm Landon Van Fossen. I'm a sophomore and I play wide receiver. Levi Wagner, class of 2022 and starting corner. I'm Abram Wickline. I'm a tight end. I watch Clash Royale on the side and Class of 2024. I think that might be it. Has anybody else not been up here? All right. Thank, thank you, guys. Appreciate everybody coming up. As we said, it obviously takes a whole team, whether it's in practice, the games, or whatever, to get to this point. So congratulations to all of you. You've all earned it. And hopefully there's an, another game or two left in your future. Before we wrap up, I want to talk to a couple of the, the players one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, we have Ian Klein coming up here now. And Ian, uh, I guess let, let, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the season. I know you have big goals for yourself, but, but what were, were kind of your goals going into the season? What, what did you hope to accomplish? You know, I was hoping to have a big season all year, and with thanks to the team and the line and everybody blocking, you know, uh, it was possible for me to have those accomplishments that I dreamed for. I haven't watched the season from, from start to finish. I think back to that Woodrow game where you just pounded the ball. I can't remember how many, close to 40 carries I think you had that game, and uh, you, you just kind of pounded it three or four yards at a time. No really big runs, but you just got you kept moving the chains. What did that feel like to, to, to have that kind of load put on your shoulders against a team like Woodruff? You know, it was a big rivalry and having that big game that we had to win. Uh, you know, one of my first big games of the season, having that kind of game and uh, really sparking the rest of the season for, to go forward. Then you go a little bit later in the season, you go on the road at Hampshire, break a school record. Uh, just tell you what that feels like. There's been a lot of great, great running backs in, in Greenbury's history. What, what's it feel like to – to have more yards in a single game than, than any running back in the school's history. 
You know, I really wasn't striving for it before the game, and when I heard the number, like, near third or fourth quarter, I kind of got a little excited. But they put me back in there for one more run, I got on that final run, and big thanks to the linemen. You know, I couldn't do it without them. I think when you look at your season and the yardage you had, what we kind of just now talked about is might be what's most impressive. There's, there's games where you just kind of pounded ahead three or four yards at a time. Then there's games when you're, you're cutting, making guys miss, getting big chunks. What kind of running back do you consider yourself? Are you kind of a, a do-it-all type, or, or how do you see yourself? You know, I'm kind of like, I don't know, kind of a dual threat. So I can go power back or I can go speed. You know, I like to do mix it up between both. I just get whatever I can to get the yards needed. I know I asked Coach Lee a minute ago, you, you, you win eight games for the first time in, in 23 years. What does that mean to you? I, I know what it means to, to people that maybe have followed the program for a long time or to the coaches, but what, but what does it mean to you? You know, it's big for uh, my platform here that Coach Lee likes to talk about as a sophomore, you know, or uh, getting that recognition. And big thanks to the team, man. Like, we couldn't do it without – like, we came, really came together near the end of the season, pushed those couple games and finished that eight and two. The other thing I mentioned to him, it's been since 1996 since Green Bay East won a playoff game. How motivated are, are you to change that stat? You know, I'm really motivated. We, we've been going at it all, hard all season, really hard this week. We're just trying to make it to that second round. Just, just overall, what, what has this week felt like for you, just knowing that you're going to the playoffs, the, the support from the community, events like this one? What's it feel like to be in this spot? You know, it's really surreal. It's really seeing the community come together and help us out with team meals and stuff like this. It just really, feels really good. So you, you set that single game record. You've made the playoffs. You're looking for the first playoff win. You still have a lot of high school football in front of you. What, what are your goals down the road? You know, I just want to make sure I'm still doing the same thing the years to come, even better season than I have this year, and uh, make sure we really come together as a team and make it even farther in playoffs the next couple, next couple years. Well, I appreciate it. Wish you best of luck. And uh, let's bring Monquell up here. Where's he? Is he? Has he left? Uh, let's let's bring a defensive guy. Where's Cayman? Cayman, you in here? All right. So some of the same questions for you. I guess let's start off with uh, what's it feel like to be in this spot, knowing you're you're getting ready to play tomorrow night in the first round of the playoffs and try to break a, a string of 25 years since the playoff win. I mean, it's a good feeling, obviously, but. I'm just hoping that we can get past this first week. I mean, that, that's my big thing. Like, I, I don't want to be content with just going to the first round. I want to make that extra step and go to the second round at least. And then maybe the third, and then maybe who knows. I mean, that's all up to everybody behind me, you know. But when you look, look at GW on tape, what, what do you think it's going to take to get there defensively? What, what, what do you have to do to slow them down? Well, uh, not having Garrett and uh, Wickline and JT is definitely going to be a little hindrance, but – we got enough players to come up and, you know, step up in those positions. So I think we'll be all right. We just need a lot of drive. and We just can't quit. We can't quit. I, I mentioned it to Coach Lee that, that earlier, and kind of like I, I was talking about Ian, which, which, the way he steps up in different games. Some day, games he needs to be a power back. Some days he, he gets the big runs. Same kind of thing for, for, for you, you guys defensively. You've done pretty much whatever it takes, and whether it's been a tight game where you, you hold a team scoreless or to very few points, or if it's a more of a high-scoring game, you make the, the plays, get some turnovers when you need them. Uh, just, just talk about this defense in general and what you've accomplished this year, and what, what, what do you think makes this defense so good? The grit, definitely. We're a bunch of tough kids. I mean, we have, we've had like maybe one injury across the whole season like on defense and just immediately bounce back from it, if, like even with that one injury. But... I mean, we're just we're just animals. I mean, that's it. I mean, you just got to come down to just playing hard-nosed football, and I mean, we can do it. When it comes down to it, you know, there, there's a lot on the line, a lot of excitement. You guys are trying to break records and, and end a, a streak, but when it comes down to it, it's a game. It's supposed to be fun. How much fun has this season been, winning eight games, and really, as we, Coach Lee and I talked, not that far away from being undefeated? I mean, it, it has been a joy, and I mean, it's just depressing this being my – my fourth year, I just wish I had more time with this group of players and this coaching staff. I just, I love all of them, but I mean, it's, it's about time to hang up the pads. But I mean, I guess when you, you look back at that journey, that might even be more motivation to go out tomorrow night and get a win. That's the one thing that this group hasn't done is win a playoff game. So time to change that tomorrow night, right? Yep, yep. And I definitely, I definitely believe that this is the year that we could do it. I mean, we got all the tools and all the right places we can. I think we can go all the way. I mean, that, that's just, that's me. I want to, I mean, my dad, he was in the 88 team, so I want to, 
I want us to experience that too and just so I can hang that over his head too that we went there and hopefully win it all. But, I mean, we got to take it one step at a time. So. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Best of luck and uh, go get a win tomorrow night. All right, Monquell, get up here. So, same kind of question I asked Cayman. Just the, this atmosphere here tonight, seeing uh, the community coming out and support you, your, your friends and family being out here, you guys being together as a team, knowing you play for, for a playoff game tomorrow night and try to end that streak of, of not winning a playoff game. What's that feel like? What's it mean to you? It feels good. I mean, we worked hard since August, I'll say. We just work hard, keep grinding, and I don't know. I just I love them, bro. Just keep working. Kind of the same theme we've had with these other guys. Uh, you're kind of a, a dual threat guy, can, can win games however you need to. There's been games where you need to throw it a little bit more. And then there's been games where you just uh, need to turn around and hand it to Ian over and over. Uh, what, what, kind of, what do you consider your strengths as a quarterback, and, and, and what is your mindset when you take the field and, and lead this team? Uh, always, I was always thinking about just being a leader, you know what I'm saying? Take take ball, I mean, um, just be slow, you know what I'm saying? Don't do everything too fast, and you know, everything go through perfectly. Take us back to what had to be one of the most fun moments of the season, overtime against Princeton. You, you get the call there, find the end zone to, to put your team up, and, and eventually the game winner. What, that, just take us through that play and in, in, in the aftermath of that play. I mean, before that play, um, I went to Coach Baker. I was like, Coach, just give me the ball. I'm going to score. So he gave me the ball, went around the corner, go for the end zone pylon. I was in there. Having, as I talked with Coach Lee about, having the weapons you have on offense, you, you've got some guys out there that can catch you, the receiver. You've got a big offensive line in front of you. You've got a great back. Uh, how much easier does that make your job, knowing that, that those guys are out there for you to make a play when you need them? Uh, I noticed that they um, always protect me. And, like, um, I just know, man, I, um, I don't know, bro. I just know they love me. They'll protect me, and I won't get hurt, baby. It, it has to be fun for you, too. Knowing that the guys start when they start to the key on in a little bit, that might open up a little running room on the outside for you to use your legs and, and speed and get to the end zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad when they do that because then it lets me, you know what I'm saying, just do my job and the score, baby. Third touchdowns is what I do, baby. So we, we found out what it, what it took on defense to win. What's it going to take offensively to get a win against George Washington tomorrow night? Uh, I got to throw the ball more, um, trust in my arm, and use my legs. All right, well, wish you the best of luck. Thanks for joining us, and uh, go beat GW tomorrow. Mm. All right, that's going to pretty well wrap it up tonight. We appreciate the players, coaches, and everybody for coming out tonight and uh, making this show possible. One more time, I want to read through our sponsors real quick. Beckley Auto Mall, Willie Lilly, uh, Paco Mandeville, Tattered and Warren, Mountain Maid, and Lazan Painting, Bank of Monroe, State Farm Insurance, Gary Aid, Food and Friends, The Market, Henshaw Insurance, Brown Construction, Mayor Beverly White, and of course, a big thank you to Hill and Holler Pizza for hosting us uh, tonight. We thank you. I, I did want to say one thing. Uh, Ian Klein was up here just a moment ago. I do a talk show every Thursday night. It's called Courtside with Coach Chris. I'm an old basketball coach from way back when. And uh, we pick an athlete of the week each week. And Ian was, I, I think, was our week six uh, athlete of the week. He got picked. So, and that's, that's sponsored by Gino's Pizza. We won't say that very loud. But anyway, Ian's going to get some pizzas and biscuits from Tudor's World. So congratulations to him. Again, we want to thank all the sponsors for helping us out with this tonight to make this possible. Coaches, players, we appreciate you. Family, friends, and fans, we appreciate you. Get out and support the guys tomorrow night as we take on GW and knock him off for this first step in the playoffs. Good luck and go Spartans!